Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this quick video, I'm going to show you how to apply a decal to an object that already has a material applied, but do it in a way that it's easily manipulated. Let's dig into it. So I've modeled up this simple scene, but I want to place a warning label above this control panel. I've already placed a metal texture on the wall, so I want the label to appear on top of that. You can see the PBR texture setup that I added using Node Wrangler, using a metal texture that I got from cc0textures.com. If you're interested, this was Metal 11. But right now, I'm going to disconnect my principal BSDF from my material output, and I'm going to add in my label. I'll add in a new BSDF shader, plug it into the output. I'm going to remove the displacement for now. Next, I want to add my texture. I'll use an image texture. And this is just a simple image I found on Pinterest. I'll plug this into the base color. As you can see, the label is applied in a way that we don't want. We need to find a way to direct this label to go in the space that we want it. To do this, we're gonna use object coordinates. So I'm gonna add an input of a texture coordinate. I'll take object and plug it into the vector. Currently, we don't have an object selected, so we're gonna need to add something to line up this image with. Easiest thing to do here is to add an empty. I'm gonna call this decal empty. And I'm gonna move it in front of my door. The next thing I'll do is choose decal empty for my object. Now right now you might be thinking this has made it even worse, but let's zoom out and see what's happening. As you can see, the image has been projected from the Z direction and it's repeating. So what we can do is turn off repeat, we'll change it to clip. Now the image is just right here. I'm going to choose my decal empty and move it a little bit. As you can see, the image is still being projected from above, no matter where I place this. The easiest way to change this is just to rotate my empty. I'm going to rotate it on its x-axis by 90 degrees. Now you can see it's projecting against the wall instead of down on top of it. If I want to change the size of my decal, I can simply scale my empty and move it from side to side. I'll keep adjusting it until I get it to where I want it. That looks pretty good for now. Of course, what you will notice is that our texture on the wall is gone and all we have is our decal. Going back to my wall texture, what I want to do is mix this decal in with the rest of the texture. I'm going to move these three shader nodes up here and I'm going to add a shader mix node. I'll plug both shaders into this. While this gets us close to what we want, you'll see that it's actually blending these two halfway and that isn't what we want. What we're going to do is use the alpha channel of our decal image to drive which shader gets applied. So I'll grab my alpha channel and plug it into the factor of my mix shader. Well, as you can see, things are backwards from the way I want them. The easiest way to adjust this is just to switch these two inputs. By using the two principled shaders, I now have full control over how the surface of the decal looks as compared to how the surface of the wall looks. This method works pretty well especially if you only have a few decals that you want to apply to a given shader. If you want to do extensive decaling, I would suggest going with a second UV map and using the UV coordinates of the object to place your decals. I'll cover this in an upcoming video. Here I'm going to add another decal, a little sped up. So there it is, just one quick and easy way to apply some decals to a model. Like I said, We'll cover some other methods in future videos. This one's pretty simple and can really only be pushed so far before it really starts to make your materials pretty complex. I hope this is helpful and I hope it helps you make something awesome. If you've been enjoying the channel, make sure to subscribe. I'll catch you next time.